So this is a weird one. I've not done this before, so let's just assume I have. If you don't like the format that I'm doing this in, and this is not what you came here to see or hear, then as always, just fuck off somewhere else, okay? Now I've noticed a few people are doing these videos, they're doing little charts and graphs and tier systems based on different fucking guns and retailers and styles and dildo sizes. Well, I love a chart and I love a top 10. I like, I, I can't fucking resist them. So I'm actually quite, as soon as I saw people doing that, I was like, yeah, fuck it, I'm in, let's do this, fuck it. So all this fucking audio you're hearing is me just yammering away from my bed. All right, I'm on the bed, got a beer. So as time goes on, I might get a bit more belligerent. So we'll see what happens there. Basically, what I'm looking at doing is not using a tier system, just running through the list of known manufacturers, the most well-known manufacturers, a few that are not so fucking well-known. And my intention is not to go, this is really good or these are really shit. What I'm gonna try and do is just lay down a couple of little facts. Things I like about them, things I don't like about them and so on and so forth. And as always, uh, if my mother's taught me any lessons in life, it is one, got nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all. I generally didn't listen to that one. And secondly, uh, you can basically earn more money if you do anal and it gets easier over time. So with all that in mind, let's crack on. Right, this is exciting. I've not had one of these in years, absolutely fucking years. This is a King Arms SIG 556. I think it's a very, very cool looking gun. Takes the SIG format, throws a fucking M4 stock on it, gives it a standard, standard mag. Trouble with this is, they're not very good. This is the point where King Arms really started to drop in quality. So, although it looks excellent with the steel upper, and the cast lower, it just looks fantastic. It's got all the markings, but unfortunately, it's just not very good. So we're gonna turn this into the best gun that we can. First up, Cybergun. Now, Cybergun don't make fuck all, nothing. What they did is they kind of uh, wandered over to the people that make stuff. And they went, oh, we'd like to sell that. But how can we make it that no one else is allowed to sell it as well? And they toddled off and they approached people who own the rights to trademarks, like, like, fucking, like fucking Colt and Beretta and all these people. And they basically made all their money just by buying up the rights. Now you can do that as well. If you've got the capital, have a little look to see when rights expire and all you've got to do is go in there, put your money down and go, I will pay more to buy the right to use your trademark and your, you know, your licensing as it were. And that is exactly why Cybergun stuff is so expensive. Umarex, exactly the fucking same thing, except they, uh, they kind of have the UK and European dominance over Heckler & Koch products and a few other bits and pieces as well. It was Heckler & Koch used to be owned by British Aerospace and other people, so, it, it's it, that simple. They don't make anything. So when you see these people out there who are selling an Umarex so-and-so, an Umarex that, they fucking aren't. Obviously you've got the Umarex Glock, which is a VFC. For the majority, sometimes it's not. You've got the Umarex Glock, and if you look at it, it says official trademark or licensed trademark of. I'm sorry, if I'm gonna buy something, if it's not the real thing, if it's not a real Glock, then why? Am I going to pay extra money to have something that is not correct? Over in the States, and there's somewhere else as well, I believe, you know, Elite Force, they do the same thing. You find this stuff that is basically Elite Force branded. There's a bit of a crossover. We've got some Elite Force stuff in the UK as well. They rebrand everything as well. 
but you don't get so much Umarex stuff over in, in the States. It is all Elite Force branded instead. And there are some little crossovers there. So when you see Elite Force, Umarex, Cybergun, they ain't done fuck all. <laughs> They've done nothing apart from give some money to people to use their name. That's all that's fucking happened there. If we move down the line just a little bit, you've got ASG. Now, ASG, same thing, but they are a fucking huge company. And they actually manufacture a couple of little bits. They don't. But they have airsoft guns that are particular to only them. The Evo, for example. I don't have a massive problem with ASG. Generally speaking, they are a decent company to deal with. They do look after their customers and the quality of their stuff is actually pretty damn good. I'm not a massive fan of the Evo because they are really good, really good, really good. Nah, no, that's, that's a lie. They are fairly good, fairly good, fairly good, fairly good, fairly good, fairly good. Red light of death and then you've got problems. And then you are literally sending that thing for repairs every 30 seconds. And obviously you've got the Bren as well, which is literally King Arms on the inside. They didn't do fuck all, that's a rebrand. But I don't believe King Arms released it under their own name, so you know, who the fuck am I, right? But ASG stuff, they have put some effort in there and the quality of their product is actually better than the last three we just mentioned. So if we're gonna carry on in that vein, where would we be without talking about Nuprol? Trying to find the right way to word this. Nuprol AEGs, are, well, they're not expensive. They're not expensive. In full auto, they're all right. They are definitely aimed at the beginner market. Uh, moving on, Raven, C new Pro. Say what you want, same people. Now, I've tried to put this in a particular order that makes sense for people, just to make it have some kind of flow to it. But at some point, it's gonna drop out of flow, all right? It, it's not gonna work out 100% perfect. So at this point, let's move over to WE. WE, very, very, very well-known brand. And WE are also a very, it's a miss brand. People say to me, what, what, what fucking gas rifle should I buy? Gas boat rifle, what should I get? And I tell them, get a WE. And the reasoning is very, very simple. If you're gonna rock a rifle, gas blowback, and you want to be able to just use it, buy a WE. They are, as accurate as any gas blowback rifle, really, with a simple hot rubber change. Brilliant. Now, I'm not gonna go into the do's and don'ts of what we do with upgrading gas rifles. I'll probably do a different video another day. But if something breaks down, you need to be able to get parts. Gas rifles, they, they break down, just like anything does. But if you're trying to get parts for other gas blowback rifle brands, you could be a little bit stuck. Whereas with WE stuff, you can get parts all day long. All day long. Sometimes you might have to search around for half an hour before you find the bits you want, but you can get this shit anywhere. And for that reason, if you want to buy a gas blowback rifle, buy a WE. They're cheap. If it breaks, you just replace it with another WE part. It's that simple. So you go out and you've got a low powered bolt for inside and buy a separate bolt for, your, for the gun that is of the higher power for when you want to be outside. It's that simple. It's so it's such a simple idea. And take the bolt out, put a new one in. Don't be a cunt at your airsoft site and try and put the high power bolt in, all right? Don't do that. People like me take particular offense to those kind of cunts, so don't do it. But you do have that option. It's so, so quick and simple if you want to change the setup of your gun by changing one part in a flash so that you can then be rocking your gun at a different site that is outside rather than inside up close and personal, right? WE pistols are very, very hit and miss. You've got the good stuff. Now the good stuff includes the Glocks, okay? The G series, very good. The SIG series, you've got the 2D6, both Navy and RF, E2. You've got 228, 229. Fantastic. Really, honestly, absolutely brilliant. You've also got uh, their Bulldog series, which is the PX4. They made a compact one as well, but that's not so good because the barrel is literally the length of my foreskin. So it's just, it, it's not great. But the full size PX4, if somebody says, I want to get a gun that, you know, not, other people don't tend to use, I always go PX4. You've got the crap ones, like the Toucan. That is basically the Smith & Wesson M&P. Now that's not so good. It's pretty fucking terrible in fact, you know. 
burst fires when it feels like it. You've got the XDM. That's pretty damn good as well. It is, again, cut. Here's the thing. The Glock, PX4, the XDM, and the SIG are all carbon copies of the TM. And then they get shrunk down by WE. Have you noticed how the compact version of the XDM isn't quite as good as the full size? And now the compact version of the PX4 definitely isn't as good. You notice that? Weird, right? A company called HK3P were making the licensed... <laughs> I lie. They were making versions of these pistols. They were making them for WE, basically. I cannot say that is 100% true. It would be unfair of me to do that. But the general consensus is that HK3P or HK3 or HK uh, were making those. Uh, <laughs> it's the normal factory bullshit you get made in China on the sly. And then they make them for another company, like WE, and then they throw their own trademarks on it and sell it cheaper because they can put the real legit trademarks on it, you know, make actually write Glock on the side or SIG and all these things, uh, XDM, make actually write that shit on the side, PX4. And um, obviously WE, bigger company, they don't want to get in that kind of trouble. So they just don't do it, you know. These are the best that WE make because it wasn't them basically. Uh, and that is why they are the best. Then you've got the Luger, and the Luger is a 98% copy of the Tanaka. That's a WE thing, and the Luger is right up there, the WE Luger is right up there with the worst gas blowback pistol I think you can buy. And I'm only going to mention if they actually fall into this category, so in this case, the WE Luger and sadly the WE Browning, both of which are 98% copies of the Tanaka equivalent, pretty poor. And then you've got everything else that kind of falls in between. But WE, you get the parts nice and easy. Why did I throw WE back in it? Let's go back to Raven. Some of their stuff isn't bad. The uh, the Glock replica series, you know, the G series, whatever they call it. I don't know what they call it. Uh, I don't care either. It is the same. It is. But there are some minor differences. Now, they weren't made in the same factory as WE or the HK3 or HK3P or HK or whatever you want to call it, ACM. Uh, not entirely anyway. You can see the valves on the mags are different. You've got the WE EU series, which got, you know, rather than having black or grey nozzles, they've got green nozzles or red nozzles or blue nozzles. It gets very confusing. Um, but it is all kind of the same stuff. Whereas the Raven stuff, yeah, you know, the reason the Glocks aren't too bad is because they've done all right with how, with, with who did the copying and the making in the first place. All right. So they're not too bad. You know, people cunt out Raven all the time. Their, their G series is pretty good. 1911 series, very hit and miss in the QC, in my opinion. Some are really good, some are not. But if you want to buy a 1911 that's got a fucking red dot sight already built into the rear sight, what the fuck are they called? So the 1911 kind of stuff, it, it, it's not anywhere near as good a quality as their Glock kind of stuff. So Raven, yeah, start a gun, great. You know, if you, if you really, really, really care, you probably, you know already not to buy a Raven. But if you're going to go to an airsoft shop and you want to buy a gas blowback gun, you'll have a great time playing with the Raven. You know, you'll be all right. Fine. But probably go with the Glock over the rest, right? Vorsk. It, it's it's um, basically all that same shit I just said. That's it. It's just, it's the same shit that I just said. Uh... It seems likely, just just likely, because again, I, did, I don't know this for sure, but after looking at the internal parts of the Armourer Works, this is why I can't do this in a fucking set order, uh, looking at the internal quality of the Armourer Works, it's basically the same as that. Now, to go further, I'm going to have to move on to Armour Works. So Armour Works, they make loads of high cappers and shit like that. And um, they are basically, <laughs> fucking hell, this is so, oh God, it's a wormhole. It is basically WE as well. 
uh, same kind of quality, same materials, some uh, same people make some of the same parts, and it, it all kind of meh. But it is a lot more premium. And by premium, I mean they change the colours of the routers and the gas mags, uh, but they're the same. Um, <laughs> it's probably a different material, but it's like, oh, fuck off, you know? Uh, it, it is not exactly nine more quality. So, this is so fucking difficult. So, <laughs> try to be polite. So, Armour Works, I believe that when you buy an Armour Works pistol, you pick it up and you gas it up. As soon as I fired one for the first time, I don't like high cappers, they're ugly and boring because they're just so vanilla. You can do so much with them, they become vanilla. Uh, it's very much like indie music. Back when I used to listen to indie music, it was indie music because it was completely independent. You had to find it, and when you found it, you realise how good the quality was compared to the manufactured shit and the non-independent stuff. And then now, because of the invention of YouTube and so forth, there are more indie musical organisations than there are, <laughs> you know? There are so many indies out there that it's not indie anymore. That's kind of how I see high cappers, you know? it's. So you can do anything with it. Every single one can look different. And it makes it so fucking vanilla. It just makes it so vanilla. Anyway, that's an opinion. That is not a fact. Armour work stuff, as soon as I fired one the first time, I was, I was like, wow, this is really good. This is really snappy. Um, it's, it's just, I can't see any fucking gas or liquid venting out. The BBs are going really straight, really far. It's hopping heavyweight ammo. This is actually fucking impressive. And then after you've been using it, you know, let's say once a week for a month or two, it's worn out almost. You know, your rear sight's flicked off across the room. The front sight's come off over there. The hop isn't really working anymore. It's starting to vet. It's really fucking great out of the box but realistically, they do not last as long as they should do. But that is comparing it to how it was firing when it was fresh out of the box. When you compare it to how other high capper, you look at the WE high capper series, the original, and we still buy them now, the WE high capper, the uh, Armour Works will still perform better, a bit worn out, than those ones do out of the box. But, eh, you know, it's just, it is a letdown when you take it out of the box and it is just unbelievable. And then after a few months, it's just not unbelievable anymore. It's just kind of sad. Well, Armour Work, we're using this uh, like red loading nozzles and they weren't bright red. They were like this creamy colored, pinky red. Same nozzles that are in the Vorsk, who also make that kind of stuff. And it's like, oh fuck. The wormhole, the wormhole, fucking wormhole. That's all I can say. WE, Nuprol, Vorsk, Raven, Armour Works. It's not all the same thing. Kind of is. Now I'm gonna fuck with you. Double bell. <laughs> fucking hell, same thing. Now, <laughs> this is so hard. Double bell are uh, available right now. Double Bell, I get asked all the time, what is the Double Bell HK416 like? Because it's bloody cheap. And do you know what? It's good. It's good. Hop unit's crap, but you just basically turn the hop all the way on, you can hop two weights, brilliant. And it will take the gun from 410 FPS out of the box down to about 340. Uh, that's when you're croning a point two. So, with that in mind, it's actually not a bad gun. Then we get all fucking wormholey again. Hold on to your cunts again. Back when the first China soft stuff started coming out, so ACM, all China made, uh, there are quite a few companies that still exist now, and a few companies that just fucking died a death. Now, companies that died a death, you have Both Elephant, or BE, and they made Styrogs, and they made a Type 89, and what else? Oh Christ, something else. Uh, I'm gonna say quite possibly a G36 and an XM8. And they were very slightly different. You couldn't use any of the normal Styrol mags or Type 89 mags inside the both elephant stuff, it didn't fit. 
Uh, I don't know why you do that for a little Chinese company. Well, they suddenly disappeared because that was when the Chinese government started really pretending to stamp down on this. Um, totally not walking in the warehouse, fire, you know, kicking people out of the building and then taking bribes to, get, <laughs> to give the moulds back. Um, both elephant became Tercel, basically, and then Tercel became something else. Well, we also had companies like D-Boys. Now, D-Boys made AR variants, and they were quite good. They also had a company called Kalash, who made AKs, and they were copies of the VFC stuff. Because back when VFC were actually all right, they used to make, oh, whoops, they actually made some AKs that were very, very, very good looking, very cool performers, nice little guns. Kalash and D-Boys were the exact same company, except one was pushed towards people who like ARs, and one was pushed towards people who like AKs. Now, there have been other iterations of those people, but right now, the generally accepted company is Double Bell. Double Bell is D-Boys, which was Kalash. Confusing, right? It's good, isn't it? Now, there's another manufacturer out there of AKs, and I can't pull their name out of my mind right now, but they are basically making things for, oh, just fuck it, who cares? So, <laughs> it's so fucking hard to do this, man. Uh, like, the people who make these videos, generally, they don't know a lot about the stuff they're talking about, but, you know, they make interesting content, and the last couple that I've been watching, I actually agree with what they're saying. YouTubers, um, so, oh, thank you for putting me in the A tier. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. There's, they don't always have the same in-depth knowledge that other people have because there's shit I don't know about and there's shit that they don't know about and there's shit that you don't know about because we don't know everything. Well, this is really difficult if you kind of do know a lot about this shit. So, oh God, I'm trying to simplify as best I can. I can go all day. I'm also trying to not point out things that are a little bit unscrupulous. I'm trying not to be a cunt. I'm trying not to be too nice either. So just fucking stick with me. Now, Double Bell, and they are good. I like the Double Bell stuff. I like the Double Bell stuff. Now that I think about it, Double Bell are the company that made the AKs. So, hey, there you go. There we go. So, Double Bell, quite like them. Really do quite like them, they're solid. D-Boys, again, quite like them, solid. And I'm not saying that you go and buy a fucking D-Boys Kalash Double Bell, that you're gonna get the same quality as something in the proper high tier shit, but for what you're paying, you're getting a bastard good gun. So, winning, winning, A and K. A and K make ARs. Uh, they make some really, really low-end shit without a name on it. Uh, they make all the 249s and stuff. Now, wormhole shit. A and K. You can buy the Spetzer Arms 249 right now. It's got the A and K gearbox and hop-up and shit inside it, but it's got a different. Uh, it's got a different manufacturer's body on it, which is all plastic, which is good. A um, and K are uh, I. I if somebody says, I want to buy a base gun and then I just want to fucking tear all the guts out and make it really good, I say, buy an A&K. If you want to replace everything on the inside, buy an A&K. Because for an external AR-15 variant, you know, you, you can't go far wrong with an A&K. There's no trademarks on them, but they are fucking solid, cool-looking guns. The internal quality is absolutely adequate for what they do. It's what you'd expect. So expect to change to a rotary hop unit, expect to change the hop rubber, expect to have to drop the power for the UK, expect it to need reshimming and cleaning out, expect this stuff. You can pick up an A&K and just use it, AR-15. But obviously the 249 and 60 series, that's a bit more difficult because these guys have basically wormhole. These, uh, back in the 90s, we had top and top made M60s and eventually made 249s. And you were talking around the 700 pound to 1500 pound mark for a mostly plastic gun that worked in a bellows system. So it had gears in it, but instead of a piston and cylinder you'd expect nowadays, it worked in a bellows system. So like you, you, know, you, you see your grandma blowing air into the fire. 
It's a, it's just a big squidgy zigzaggy plastic funnel thing that moves up and down, right? You might have seen your dying uncle attached to one breathing for him. Well, this bellow system broke almost instantly. So they brought out um, a couple called Angs, brought out a kit for it that gave you uh, the ability to have a cylinder and a piston and stuff like that. Great. It was really, really good. Then other companies such as Classic Army, uh, who else? GMP. They jumped to the bandwagon eventually and they started making the same guns but without the bellow system and put all this stuff inside it. Now, if you've got a VHS pirate copy of Roger Rabbit, chances are that you've got something that's worth far more money than a real VHS copy of Roger Rabbit. And the quality, as it goes down, the pirate of the pirate of the pirate of the pirate gets really shitty. And that's kind of where we're at with a &K with the 249 series. And that is that the vast majority remained, the ideas remained from back then. Not the exact same designs, but Classic Army 249s, which these are basically copying, uh, have an inherent issue where the piston just ain't fucking long enough. And it is, if I had to pick a gun that needs AOE correction, it is the Classic Army and hence AMK and hence Spetzer Arms 249 because they strip pistons sometimes within the first 50 or 60 rounds. It sucks, all right? But they were cheap. You just had to pick up an AMK 249 or M60 for 150 quid. Now, more than double that. But they've also improved the quality of the bits and pieces and they still haven't fixed the stripped gears. But, you know, they're solid. Um, if you want a cheap support gun, you know, go open up, you know, they're not hard to work on. ANK is a solid choice. Ares. Just going to get my beer. Next down the list is s &T. So, if you look at what s and sell, right? s and sell or make Tavors, which are pretty much identical to the Ares. Now we saw we had a company called Star. Star came out and they were shit. And they had L85s and they had FNCs and they had, uh, God, G36s, 249s. And the Star stuff was pretty fucking shit quality. And this company popped up called Ares. And people realized, hang on a second. It's the same gun, just with a couple of little upgraded. It's the same. And yeah, basically, Ares were making most of the stuff for Star. If you're listening, Please make a new FNC. We really want a new FNC. A new FNC, please. But as it turns out, a lot of this stuff isn't, you know, Aries even. Because um, if you look at what s and sell, it's the same as, uh, same as Aries. Just without little bits and bobs, like the, uh, uh, ETUs and EFCs and uh, all that shit. You have three, three letters in a line that no one fucking knows what it means. So all that stuff there, s and make basically all the same guns. And sometimes the external quality is not quite as good. And sometimes it's better. The internals, you look at it and go, it's the fucking same. It's just slightly less finished. But they work slightly better. And then s and have done some little tweaks. And the guns are a bit more reliable from s and than what they are with Ares. Which were a bit more reliable than what you have with Star. So if you have the choice of buying a Star or an Ares or an s and I'd pick an s and I didn't include Star on this list because they do not exist anymore. End of. End of. Now, when I've worked on Tavors, 
I found the S&T was just, it went back together a lot easier. It wasn't quite as refined in some ways, but in other ways it was much more refined. And it's obvious that S&T have definitely got uh, something to say when it comes to the airy stuff, shall we say. In the same way that Ares had something to say when it came to the star stuff. A-Y. Hey? Eh? Dad jokes. So, A-Y. They make very little and they don't make them often. But when they do, mwah, beautiful. The AR-15 that you don't need to put a mag in because it takes P90 mags on top. Only AY make that. And it comes fully trademarked, it's fucking wonderful. It is straight out of China. And AY make some really cool shit. And it is on the same level as D-Boys, Kalash. You cannot expect the world from an AY gun. You can't, you know. As normal, if it's an ACM gun, you're gonna have to change the hot rubber out. You may have to change your barrel out, most likely. There's only one ACM brand where I go, you don't just change the barrel, and they're coming up. AY, there's nothing wrong with their stuff. Now, AY also make uh, a PDW, here comes a wormhole. They make a PDW that is a direct, direct copy of the D-Boys PDW, which is a copy of the VFC PDW. Just without the trademarks, or with trademarks, what we get. The AY doesn't have trademarks, but you can see it's the exact same thing. The uh, grade steel effects, or the grade st is steel on the switches and things, is the same as on the D-Boys version. So it would seem the AY could quite possibly be D-Boys, but I don't know for sure, which means they'll probably double bell wormhole shit right that's who they are uh, if you buy an ay you buy cheap you've got to change a few parts out but you get a fucking good gun crytac there's nothing wrong with the build quality it's just over elaborate and in this hobby you don't want to have something that you cannot change the parts out if you don't like them you, you don't want that in this hobby so with the crytac when you are stuck with a mosfet that you can take out and rewire that's fine because the mosfets are not great they do tend to die if you're not if you don't follow the correct battery precautions. But things like the gears, you know, the, the, everything in it is of the highest quality apart from the MOSFET. And people are changing out their hop units and barrels and rubbers. And honestly, I've not really seen many problems with that shit. You know, it's only over time when they got worn out. People go, oh, Crytek rubber's shit. I've been using mine for two years and it's not hopping anymore. But guess what, motherfucker? It's a fucking hop rubber. What do you want? They are not terrible. They are definitely mid-tier that think they are top tier but it is the fact that they have done little tiny tweaks to their guns that means that you just can't put a regular old gear set in there if you get a strip they are making you buy their stuff and i've now fitted a set of prometheus gears into a crytac and they're equally as fucking noisy but i'm going to do the same kind of if, if you like this video i'll fucking do another one for parts and manufacture and things like that the ar-15 series by crytac it's solid enough, you can't complain about it, you can only complain about the MOSFET and the price. That's how I feel about it. It is not worth the money you pay for it, you've paid for the extra R&D to make your life more difficult. The R&D was placed to make your life difficult so you can buy more of their parts. It's frustrating, but that's life. The Vectors, however, garbage. I can't say... I. They're on my list. I've got a list of a few guns I will never touch again, and I'm so pleased that I will never have to touch another Crytac Vector because they are not good. Bolt. I have very little to say about Bolt that is negative. I like Bolt. I was there from day one with Bolt. I bought one for myself. Over the moon with it. Over the moon with it. But I was told from the very outset which battery was the best battery to use. So I didn't have the problems. Now, when you read about bolt guns, you hear people talking about how they, inverted commas, shook themselves to death. Well, you've got a gun with recoil. You've got to look after it more than you would do with a gun without recoil. And for all the guns that are out there, bolt does have the strongest recoil. It doesn't kick you back so much as it pulls you forward when it's done, but, Honestly, I have no issue with them. 
You've got to use them correctly, and that's where people don't like them. Hop unit works fine. The hop rubber is good. The barrel's good. It comes with a 6.00 barrel. I've never tested it, but if it is a 6.00 barrel, then it is the first 6.00 barrel I've ever had that doesn't just clog ammo up like a tampon up a bleeding cunt. So you do have to look after it a bit more. If you have an AEG and you are not looking after the grub screw or the uh, flathead plate that is adjusting your motor height, if you're not looking after these things, you might find you grind your motor up, it drops out of alignment and things like that. With a bolt, you've got a few more things to look at. And it's your, if you're gonna buy a gun with recoil, you've got to look after these things and that's the end of it. If you wanna have a really high rate of fire, don't buy a bolt. If you want a gun with a, you know, a high rate of fire, don't buy a bolt. If you want something that feels really good when you fire it in full auto and it just, it's not a high rate of fire, but it's fucking pleasing, buy a bolt. Semi-auto, if you've got recoil in something, you shouldn't use any pre-cocking, it's not a good idea, it's too much wear and tear. But it is only wear and tear, and the semi-auto in one of these is good. And a bolt motor, I quite like them, to be honest. Everyone has QC issues, but I like a bolt, I do. Classic Army, I had a real love-hate relationship with these guys when they first came out, but for the same reason I'll explain with ICS. Uh, and I'll go through it in depth with ICS because I was the fucking cunt that had to deal with the ICS. Oh God. Anyway, Classic Army. Uh, I preferred them when they were just doing their MP5s. When they started doing their AR-15s, they weren't great. 249s, still an issue with their uh, AOE and stuff. But Classic Army were a real fucking force to be reckoned with because the vast majority of their shit was made in-house. You know, it'd be assembled on the top floor, each floor, as you come down their building, bing, 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 and at the bottom they stick it in a box and it gets shipped out. That's very cool, that's very cool. Uh, if you want spare parts, they'll sort you out with spare parts. Now, the way they set their guns up is a bit weird. I was buying Classic Army M100 springs, and then I was grumbling when the gun was doing 400 feet per second, sometimes 450. But it's because the newer Classic Army they've got a different bore size and there's little differences inside their gun. So if you put an M100 spring in there, you're gonna get a low power. GMP kind of the same thing sometimes. And it was frustrating, but then I realized, you know, cause an M100 spring is gonna set you back, you know, for a decent one, they set you back for seven, eight, nine pound, 10 pound. But Classic Army springs were one pound 90 to me. And I was like, fucking hell, one pound 90 M100. Damn right. Put it in your gun. 450 feet per second, you go, what the fuck is going on? It doesn't even feel that tough, what the fuck is going on? And it's annoying, you bought a stack of them. But then you go, I've just got a whole pile of M120 to M150 springs. For one pound 90 each. <clears throat> this pleases me. They're not as good anymore. They're not as good anymore. Uh, I don't know what happened, but they are not as good anymore. The there are, obviously there's a big thing at the moment for the ARP9, anything like it. You know, King Arms have got one, Classic Arms have got the Nemesis. A lot of people have got these things now, uh, double eagle. But the Classic Army, it's, it's, I think is the best one. It's the best of that kind of nine mil glocky AR looking gun. But don't expect to be changing a lot of parts out inside it because you, you can't. You, you can change some gears and pistons and things, but a lot of those parts, are, you are stuck with it. You know, you, you have to use that kind of part. It's hard to outsource and yeah. Classic Army, unfortunately, have kind of died a death. Like when they bought out their double-barreled AEG, I thought that was gonna take over the fucking world. And I've never ever seen somebody with the double-barreled M4s ever. I just haven't seen one use one at an airsoft site ever. Did anyone even buy them? I don't know. I've never fired one, I've never had to work on one either, which means I've never seen one, so I, I guess no one bought them, which was weird. But Classic Army, they're just kind of there, and that's sad, because they had fouls and things like that. They made some really cool guns back then, and now they've just fallen by the wayside. SEMA. This is top tier shit. Back when it was all JG, AGM, D-Boys, Kalash, blah, 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 wormhole. Uh, the SEMA stuff, yeah, I mean, it was the same kind of quality. SEMA are the biggest airsoft gun manufacturer on the planet. They make tiny little two pound springers and they make other stuff for other companies 
who then rebrand it as their own. And because I signed an NDA, I can't say any more. <laughs> Although that was a while ago now, it doesn't matter. Some people know about it, some people don't. SEMA are a fucking force to be reckoned with. Now I know people don't like the MOSFETs in their Platinum series. I personally have only had one that's broken and that was my fault. But again, I'm educated in which battery to use and how not to act like a cunt with the gun, so it's not a big deal. But the SEMA stuff, you know, it is coming on leaps and bounds. They're not just trialing a new thing and putting a new rail on this. Like every month there's something new they've done that is jaw dropping and you go, bloody hell, like it's not that you're trying, like you 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 know how good your product is. Uh, you are a shitty little Chinese manufacturer, but you know exactly how good your product is. And honestly, if somebody said, what is the best brand of AEG to buy? It's a fucking SEMA. Which one shall I get? Do you know what? It doesn't matter. Buy a fucking SEMA. Golden Eagle. It's going to get a wormhole here again now. Golden Eagle. Golden Eagle are basically JG, but they're not JG, but they are, but they're not. Full metal AKs and plastic AKs. Uh, they're good. Really good. They're proper good. I really like the Golden Eagle stuff. You can't fault it. Now they're coming with quick change springs and MOSFETs. They're not great MOSFETs, but some of these guns are less than 100 quid for a full metal AK. When the AMD 65 first came out, the, 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 the Hungarian AK army, AK, I, I just, not my thing. And they were like 600 quid and I was like, fuck that. And when I realized I could buy a gold Eagle for under 100 quid and it's a full metal AMD 65 and it's completely accurate the way the real thing looks, Fuck yeah, I bought one of those. Absolutely. And so I started firing it, I loved it. And then I bought another Golden Eagle, it was a, another AK variant. And this one came with a quick change spring, and I was like, what the fuck? Started buying Golden Eagle gearboxes for uh, replacing other gearboxes and broken guns. 30 quid for an entire gearbox and a motor, quick change spring and a MOSFET. What the fuck is there not to like? Uh, Golden Eagle, you can't go far wrong. Change the barrel, change the hot rubber. Um, that's reshim it clean it out, all the normal stuff. Golden Eagle, very solid. GHK, uh, mm, this is difficult because the AKs feel and look amazing because they're not made by GHK. Obviously it's it's uh, it's the LCT and obviously LCT don't really do it either. I, I actually forget who, who do make them. But um, you know, the AKs are so well known and so solid that GHK didn't do it. Uh, it is somebody else. And the internals are really good. The way it fires, really, really, really good. First thing I did was remove the uh, the bolt hold open feature, or you know the the, uh, the the stop firing when empty feature. I completely fucking removed that uh, on my AK. Um, best thing I ever did because they fail pretty quickly. Hop unit so hard to adjust. Like it stays once you set your hop, it stays locked in place. You've got to change your hop rubber to an AEG hop rubber. Um, I use Mad Bull at the time. I've never tried to make belief in one of these. Uh, but it takes AEG barrels and hot rubbers. The hot dial is so hard to turn, you've got to put fucking uh, Allen keys in there to loosen it, undo half the hot unit to adjust the fucking, that's not useful, that's not useful. But then you lock it in place, it's fine. They are good, GHK are good. The amount you pay for it, I'm not so much so, realistically. I feel that my s and gas blowback, although it's not s and uh, who actually made it? Golden Eagle! <laughs> my Golden Eagle! Uh, so difficult. My Golden Eagle gas blowback AR, which is an absolute carbon copy of the JHK, which is a copy of the GMP, which is a copy of the Inakatsu, which is a copy of the Western Arms. Generally speaking, I prefer my 100 quid one. But it's solid, it's got loads of steel on it, loads of metal, you know, it, it does feel good. And they do work. You get the Gen 2 and 3, they, they, they do work, they're not bad. People who've got them know that they are good and they're solid performers. The way their gas blowback system works is very good, but just not for the price. The SIG was terrible. The AUG was amazing. The GHK AUG, I put some old school 134A gas in it, and the bolt only blew back enough to load the BB and lock out an empty. But you are talking about a gas blowback rifle in semi-auto. It just sounded like a Mark 23 with a little tiny bit of clicky recoil. It was so, so pleasing. G&G. &G. G, G is a difficult one for me because for years they were the guns where the front fell off. You know, you, the AR-15 where the front just fell off. 
the outer barrel and front sight, one molded piece, just fucked off the front of the gun. And every five minutes, some kitty was bringing you a G&G with the front off. Well, if I think of G&G, I think of this, this stand-up sketch, all right? Senator Collins, thanks for coming in. It's a great pleasure, thank you. This ship that was involved in the incident off Western Australia this week... Yeah, the one the front if... fell off? Yeah. Yeah, that's not very typical. I'd like to make that point. Well, how is it untypical? Well, there are a lot of these ships going around the world all the time, and very seldom does anything like this happen. I just don't want people thinking that tankers aren't safe. Was this tanker safe? Well, I was thinking more about the other ones. The ones that are safe? Yeah, the ones the front doesn't fall off. Well, if this wasn't safe, why did it have 80,000 tonnes of oil on it? Well, I'm not saying it wasn't safe, it's just perhaps not quite as safe as some of the other ones. Why? Well, some of them are built so the front doesn't fall off at all. Well, wasn't this built so the front wouldn't fall off? Well, obviously not. How do you know? Well, because the front fell off and 20,000 tonnes of crude oil spilled into the sea court fire. It's a bit of a giveaway. I just like to make the point that that is not normal. Well, what sort of standards are these uh, oil tankers built to? Oh, very rigorous maritime engineering standards. What sort of thing? Well, the front's not supposed to fall off for a start. And what other things? Well, there are uh, regulations governing the uh, materials that they can be made of. What materials? Well, cardboard's out. And? No cardboard derivatives. Like paper? No paper. No string, no sellotape. Rubber? No, rubber's out. Um, they've got to have a steering wheel. There's a minimum crew requirement. What's the minimum crew? Oh, one, I suppose. So the allegations that they're just designed to carry as much oil as possible uh, oh, and all the consequences, I mean, that's ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous. These are very, very strong vessels. So what happened in this case? Well, the front fell off in this case, by all means, but it's very unusual. But Senator Collins, why did the front hook fall off? Well, a wave hit it. A wave hit it? A wave hit the ship. Is that unusual? Oh, yeah. At sea, chance in a million. So what do you do to protect the environment in cases well, like this? Well, the ship was towed outside the environment. Into another environment? No, no, no. It's been towed beyond the environment. It's yeah, not it's in the environment. A... No, but from one environment to another environment. No, it's beyond the environment. It's not in an environment. It well, has there been must towed be beyond the environment. Well, what's out there? Nothing's out there. Well, there must be something There out is there. nothing out there. All there is is sea and birds and fish. And? And 20,000 tonnes of crude oil. And what else? And a fire. And anything else? And the part of the ship that the front fell off. But there's nothing else out there. Senator Collins, thanks for joining us. complete you. void. Yeah. They didn't feed properly either. There was just so many intolerances where... Uh, and I'd seen, I'd seen the, the, the retailers doing it, and that is the G&G shipments here, and they'd get their G&G shipment and they'd unload an entire fucking pallet, and they have to sit there with every gun, put a battery in it, put the mag in it, does it fire? No. Take the mag out, put a new mag in, does that one feed? No. Take the mag out, put a new one in, does that one feed? Yes. Put that mag in the box. I was privy to that, and it was bullshit. I did not like it. G&G stuff now, obviously, it is still, in my opinion, it's not a beginner gun. I was going to say it was, it's not. It's not a beginner gun. It is a gun that is mid-tier, I have to say. The more you spend on it, the more you get. And in a month or so, when it, when it comes around to its time, I have one of the new style uh, gearboxes, the 308 series. And I'm looking forward to that because everything I've seen about it, it does look actually pretty fucking impressive. And I'm, I can't wait to get inside that and really have a look. Because I think it's going to be quite good and I've not seen many reports from failing. The top tech blowback stuff, pneumatic blowback, terrible design, gearbox cases fucking fracturing, but g, &G seem to have found their way now and their guns are a hell of a lot better than they used to be to the point where they are basically reliable weapons. But their MOSFET and their internal switch system leaves a fucking lot to be desired and the vast majority of these issues do arise from the terrible MOSFET and the nearly as terrible switch assembly or ETU, ECU, ECS, some different names, the same fucking thing, that's on the inside. Replace those out of parent, properly good guns. The gears inside a G&G, people say they're crap gears. Never, I've seen them stripped like two or three times ever. Like, they're good gears. They're good gears. The bevel gear, I love it. I love the G&G bevel gear. e and L. I've not had to work on that many, to be perfectly honest. e and L seem all right. The external quality is bloody good, but they're also way too pretty. They look too fucking good to be AKs. They look far too good. And to this day, I have never even held one of the e l AR-15 variants. So don't even ask me about it. I don't know. But they are good. I do like the way an e l AK fires. I don't have a problem with it because I'm not expecting too much out of the gun. And obviously the prices used to be exorbitant and now they are a lot cheaper. ICS, be a game changer. Well, when ICS first came out, there was another manufacturer at the time 
Obviously, you had the other classic army MP5s as well. There's another one called Elite Airsoft, Airsoft Elite, Airsoft Elite. One of the two. They also made MP5s, and I honestly don't know anything about them. But they were full auto MP5s, you know, AEGs. It was one of the tasks that I was given when the ICS stuff came in, because they came in just blank brown boxes. There were MP5, A5s, A4s, SD5s, SD6s. And that's all there was. They didn't make anything else. And every single bloody one of them didn't have a shim or a bit of grease in the gearbox. Um, and half of them didn't have hot rubbers in. And when you are looking at pallet after pallet after pallet after pallet of them, it is a soul destroyer. So I've always had a problem with ICS because it just reminds me of that time when I got paid like fucking 40 quid a day just to stare at ICS fucking MP5s. Once you've done those bits to them, they are pretty good. And back then I wasn't very old and my skills are very limited. But they sounded better even when the noob like me had been inside it. So, moved on to the, the, the split gearbox stuff. I don't like it. I don't like it. Too prone to failure. And I wasn't aware of it because I'd never seen it myself. Tap it plates just breaking on the return spring hook. I'd never seen it. Because normally someone would say, we work on my ICS gun. And I go, oh, fuck no. Is it an MP5? Yes. Oh, Christ. Yes. Is it a split gearbox M4? Yes. No, I'm not touching it. Go away. I had no idea how many of these things break their tappet plate on that fucking hook. I can't believe it. And it's not just their own. It is any tappet plate you put in it. Uh, somebody's gun I've done recently. The gun was fucking amazing. He had it five minutes before that little hook broke. And it's like, there's nothing I can do about that. So I said, I'll have a look before you. No problem at all. I'll get it going. Blah, de, blah, de, blah. No charge. And I got it going again, put a few mags through it, it was fine. The second I got it back, the fucking hook went. He replaced it out two or three times, same thing, and it's done it again. We thought it was DMR power, it's not. We thought it's because it's, you know, I've done it on low power. It seems that, for whatever reason, they just break their hooks. And everyone has got a different, definite reason why that is. But I honestly would not still recommend ICS to people. If you're buying L85 variant, if you're gonna buy an L85 variant, the ICS is the one I'd go for if you don't really want to touch it. But you're gonna pay overpriced for a very mediocre gun. That's ICS and their gas burp pistol lineup I won't even talk about. JG. JG, um, they could have been the SEMA that SEMA are now, but they aren't. They are just still doing the exact same thing as they were. 15 years ago. It's a shame because the JG stuff is good. You know, it's not excellent. It's average. It's slightly above average. But they haven't done anything different whatsoever since day one. And they've fallen by the wayside because of that. I heard a rumor that JG are actually dead now and uh, Golden Eagle have actually taken over. It's the same company. But I've also seen a few things that say that isn't true as well. As, as with a lot of these things, you know, uh, as people really thought that the owner of a, I can't remember who it was, the, the owner of AGM, uh, they really thought that the owner of AGM had been killed. Just taken outside by the police and killed for having an airsoft gun factory. And it wasn't true. It just wasn't true. But everyone believed it for a while. JG, nothing wrong with them, just boring now. You know, just very, very, very basic. King Arms used to be excellent. King Arms used to be fucking fantastic. And now they are, they, they went to the point where they got the, the, um, the SIG 556, which was so unbelievably terrible, it was awful. Then they kind of disappeared. And they came back again, and they are just not as good as they used to be. King Arms used to be absolutely amazing. They had an AR-15 variant based on the Western Arm that was really good. Mags leaked like everyone else's did, but if you've got one, you know full well you can just put a GHK mag in it and off you go. Um, King Arms, it's difficult because they do make some iconic stuff. You know, their fouls were fantastic, but they didn't make them anymore. Um, now you've got sort of the... Uh, 
the 9mm MP5, sorry, the 9mm AR variants they're doing right now, and they are absolutely adequate, but nothing more. You've got to do a bit of fiddling with them. With a little bit of fiddling, they absolutely outperform the ARP9 on every single level. Um, and by the time you've fiddled with them and done a little bit of work to it, you've basically paid the same price as an ARP9. But the ARP9, you know, because everyone puts every fucking upgrade in it, you've got to buy an ARP9 by G&G because it's the best gun, it's so fucking good. It's like, yeah, is it though? There is nothing left in that gun apart from a gearbox casing. <laughs> you know, there's fuck all left inside this G&G, so come on now, guys. Uh, King Arms, meh. KSC, this is fun. I mentioned KSC because I'm going to mention KWA. Let's go to KWA first. KWA, engineered to outperform. So, in Japan you've got KSC. I don't know what that stands for. KSC made some awesome pistols. They made some really, a couple, a couple of really, really iconic and cool um, auto pre-cocking electric springers that I have two of and I just love them, but they are really flimsy. But KSC basically outsourced to Taiwan. They put all the R&D in, they put all the thought and effort and everything else into what they were doing, and they went, oi, this stuff here, da -da 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 -da, went out to Taiwan because it's cheaper, and then Taiwan went da -da 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 -da, and they sent the stuff back to Japan, and there you go, you've got KSC. Then you've got KSC Taiwan, where they just change out one or two tiny parts so they can use um, a higher power gas, basically, without instantly breaking. But they haven't done a good enough job to regulate how the gun works. And the KSC Taiwan stuff, they've got metal slides and shit on it, but it's just not as good performance as what you'd get with the exact same gun with the plastic components that you get from KSC. It's identical. It's the identical gun, just the KSC plastic ones are much more expensive. And obviously full metal is the best. Um, no, 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 the, the plastic ones are indefinitely, absolutely 100% better. And the KSC Taiwan stuff ain't so good compared to it. Then you've got KWA. KWA is KSC Taiwan. Way back when we used to get all these guns through that would say, uh, all these Glocks, Glock 18s, Glock 19s, and the boxes almost looked photocopied. It was hilarious. They'd almost looked photocopied KSC boxes. And everything was fine, but you could peel off the KSC sticker, and underneath it, it said KWA. So instead of the KSC G18C you were buying, you peel off the label, and it actually says KWA. <laughs> you know, G18C, and you go, what the fuck is this? It's the same gun, it's the same plastic. Then they started coming out with metal slides and everyone went mental because the uh, KWA or KSC Taiwan Glock 19 with a metal slide was literally the best fucking thing you could get for about five years. Even to this day, it is fucking solid. Um, then America got involved and they call it an American brand, but it's not. It's just not. It is. KSC Taiwan, but on a more limited ratio, basically. So there you go, I'm getting tired now, I can hear. That, that, that's what's going on right there. KWA, it's basically the lesser quality stuff that KSC Taiwan produce that KSC Japan don't want. That's KWA. And because K the Japanese airsoft companies, they don't give a fuck about anybody else, don't want to export, they don't give a shit, they're happy just being Japanese. Everyone else wants to be the big boys in the block and they will export, which is why KWA. So that's what happens with KWA, and that is why when you look at the manuals to a KSC, all the pictures are the same, everything's the same, it's just identical, the part numbers are the same, it's all the same between KWA America, KWA Taiwan, KSC Taiwan, KSC Japan, the part numbers, everything about it is identical. There's a couple of things that KWA in America do have that don't really go to other parts of the world, or sorry, uh, to Japan, etc. But to the most point, you look at the manuals, and the only difference is they're using green gas 
to power their guns. And that is why the guns break. You know, you, in Japan, they're not breaking so much. They ain't breaking. You know, the MP9 series, it's not breaking so much. It's because we are putting the wrong gas in it. And because it's got the uh, the metal rocket valves inside the MP9s, that's the reason it's breaking. You know, the um, you can't sometimes fill the mags with gas. You get like 10 shots and it's empty and you go, what the fuck? You try 134A gas, like they were using, uh, one, you know, the stuff they're using in Japan, they fill up perfectly. I wonder why, I wonder why. Why is that disconnect of breaking so quickly? Or well, maybe it's built that way because that's the Japanese standard. They have to be able to break easily so they cannot be made to be illegal. Just say. Tokyo Mori, well, they are the best, aren't they? They do make the gas pistols that are the best. And realistically, they do make the best AEGs. But a Tokyo Mori gun is not meant to be running at a high power. They're meant to be running at the Japanese standard power. They are there to do a very particular job. Run at that power, get the best range and accuracy, on a very particular weight of BB, on a very particular type of battery. And that's my beef, as you know, with the TM recoil owners. And that is that if you leave it alone, that gun will last forever. It won't rattle itself to death. It will just keep going and going and going, but that's just not good enough. And people just want to have the extra 30 or 40 FPS in the UK. So what are you going to do? You know, I've got a problem with the SCAR series because you get a TM SCAR, set the hop for two fives, and that gun's doing 275 FPS on a point two, and it is, it's throwing ammo at decent accuracy, decent distance, it's good. Not good enough, people want to use two eights and threes, and the hop unit can't deal with it, that's not what they want to be using. TM are saying use point two fives, you know, they sell other BBs, but they're saying use point two fives, and you start getting massive drop off in power and clogging and things like that. Tokyo Marui make their guns for them in Japan. And we, as much as we say we want that, we don't. We want more power. And so you've got to spend insane money to try and get a TM recall that is reliable. There's no point even talking about the other guns that are TM, you know, the high cycle stuff, maybe, but all the other stuff they do, there's no point even talking about it because it's obsolete in every country apart from Japan, which is a fucking shame because they invented this shit, you know? We wouldn't have fuck off if it wasn't for them, not anything that was good anyway. So that's kind of sad. But TM are the best, they are. Just leave it the fuck alone. I'm a hypocrite as well. I love being a hypocrite because every TM pistol that I've got, you better believe it's covered in metal kits. You better believe it. I love that shit, but I know how to build it to make it work properly. You know, you don't need to change any valves or springs or shit. You fit it properly, you don't need to, right? So there we go, TM. Yes, I actually do really like them. I have a TM report. What can I say? But I'm not, I'm not gonna change it because that's not how they're meant to work. And I'm, I'm still yet to see, you know, a fucking 1500 pound TM recoil that blows my skirt up. I'm sorry, I haven't seen one yet. Other end of the scale, Snow Wolf. Snow Wolf are kind of, you know, as far as the guns go, very, very fucking cheap. So cheap, so cheap. But they're not bad. You know, their style orgs are fucking cheap. They got rebranded by GFC in Poland. Um, but the Snow Wolf stuff, it's good. In fact, uh, Action Army, not Action Army, AA. AA, who made them? Army. There's Army Armaments, there's Army, there's Action Army, and there's another Army as well. Um, they re One of them rebranded them. Uh, this, anyway, I digress. You've got the Snow Wolf stuff, you know, they made, they've got Tommy guns that don't look very good, but you've got Pulse Rifles. If you like the Pulse Rifle, so you're, that's not my thing at all, but if you do like the Pulse Rifle, it's a fucking good looking Pulse Rifle. Snow Wolf make adequate guns, but if you've only got 300 quid in your pocket and you want an electric full metal Barrett M82 with a scope and a steel bipod, who else are you gonna to go to? And to this day, my Snow Wolf, it looks fantastic. It was just very funny to realize the barrel inside, it was only 230 millimeters long. <laughs> and it's a, it was literally a masking tape that held it securely inside. You know, they are not great inside, but uh, realistically, they are fucking cheap, really cheap. So again, base gun for a style or go mad. Spetzler Arms, 
used to be ENC. ENC used to be the guys used to make them. Obviously, uh, ENC make other stuff now, but I'm getting bored of this, so I'm not going to go into it. Um, Spetsnaz Arms used to be the fucking daddy, in my opinion. I loved them. I feel bad because they did drop the ball in the quality of their stuff, but they did also listen to these complaints and they fixed as many of those issues as they could. They're still not as good performing as when ENC were just supplying them guns that they were re-trademarking. However, they've done a lot of things that really do make you go, wow. I'm looking at the cost of a Gate Titan, and I'm looking at the cost of a Spetzer Arms rifle, and it's like, just, why would you not buy one with one inside it, you know? It, at some points, it's actually better to go and buy a Spectrum Arms gun with a Titan inside it just to take the Titan out and put it in your gun. You know, it's crazy. There are still a few little QC issues. Uh, they do need a good reshim. They do need a good regrease. It's the same as the JG stuff and some uh, a little bit the SEMA stuff and the AGM stuff. It's the same. But that's not a moan because, you know, their, their polymer bodied stuff is fucking cheap. And for what you get out of the box, it can't be beaten. It really can't. They listened. They changed the bits that weren't right. You can't moan about that. You really can't. Um, and again, plastic uh, 249s. I've got an s &T, completely plastic body 249. You can hold it outstretched with your arm like a pistol all day long. It's so light. And it runs on a fucking V2 gearbox. The Spetzer Arms has got the AK gearbox in. So it's got all the same inherent issues. But they're fucking trying, you know. You can't fault them on that. Spetzer Arms, you know, they listened, they fixed the issues. SRC, they are pretty much the dregs. Their motors are fantastic, but they really are the dregs. So there's a company called Bulldog, obviously make the worst ammo you can buy, but they've also rebranded a whole pile of the plastic gearbox SRC M4s, which you think would be terrible, but the plastic gearbox, uh, gearbox casing M4s by SRC are better than their metal ones and they sound good and they feel all right they're far too badly but you just can't expect a lot out of an src if you want to buy an src you've bought it to lend to your mate that's why you bought an src leave it the fuck alone you wanted an xm8 so you bought an src leave it the fuck alone here it is boys and girls vfc if you fancy something interesting uh, i'll leave a link in the description www.vfc.co.uk I'll leave that there. VFC are happy to rebrand for anybody. And that is why VFC is everywhere. Because a lot of companies don't want to rebrand. VFC, you pay them extra, they'll rebrand. So you can buy a VFC gun and it'll have all the crap trademarks on it. Um, <laughs> as the Asia version. Or you can buy it without the trademarks, or without the correct trademarks, with the license official stuff on. Uh, and you can pay an extra hundred quid for that. Great, amazing quality externals, but you've seen my fucking channel. Their internal quality, the com there's nothing wrong with the components, apart from the MOSFETs and switches. There's nothing wrong with the components. They do work better in every other country apart from the UK. They do, because when we get stuff coming through, you know, they just stuff an M80, M85 spring in it and go, yep, yeah, great. So when you set the hop, you know, the spring, the gun is firing a bit too fast for the gun. It chews it up a bit, but they've not done a great job in shimming and the MOSFETs blow out really easily in every country. The biggest problem for me with the VFC is that the internal quality, the way the QC, the way they've built it is not good enough. And I don't trust the quality of their gears or piston. I don't trust it. And that's the end of, I don't trust it. Gearbox casings, they often come through quite warped. I don't know why. But, like everyone says, you know, we just want VFC bodies we can put our own gearbox in. Well, if you're desperate, just go and buy a VFC and then go buy an ENC gearbox and put it in. That's it. Back in the day, VFC made amazing M4s. They, uh, well, it's not. It's, uh, it's the PDW is really good. Their AKs were absolutely fucking mind-blowing. But their pistols as well, they're just not good. People often say, you know, well, you've, I've got all these parts, my VFC block. Will you put them in there? And you go, no. Because... You know, the, 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 it, it, it's not quite right. It takes a hell of a lot of time and effort. And by the time you've done it, you may as well just bought a TM and put the parts in it. Or a WE and put the parts in it, you know? You, no. HK45 CT is, uh, it's the best gas work pistol I've ever, ever had. And the HK45, as much as I don't like the look of them, the full size, well, 
yeah, they're pretty damn good. VP9, right up there with the WE Luger and the WE Browning. The worst. Absolutely abysmal guns. VFC, look amazing. Internal quality of the parts, fair, but not in the UK because when it runs at, you know, at the speeds that we run when it's got that fucking power spring in it, they don't work for very long. And because they have been assembled by morons, just not good enough. I really do not rate VFC for that reason. If they just sold body kits, VFC would be right the fuck back up there. Double Eagle, come a long way. They, they, you know, they are the meme, aren't they? The Double Eagle fucking uh, M82s, you know. But uh, they made a copy of the G&G UMPs, the M89. And I've got some of those rental guns at my site. I did have. And good. I liked them a lot. They had a problem with the, um, with the trigger switches, but it's such a simple fix, it doesn't matter. And they go. They're really, really, really quite good. But now you've got the new stuff. I have yet to see on my bench or have anyone bring to me one of the new ARs. It's got the knockoff Titan and things. And the reports that I see is that my MOSFET just stopped working and I was fuming. I took the gun apart, put it back together, and it just started working again. Probably because it's put together in a little Chinese factory somewhere. And that's it. You put it back together better than they did. For what you're getting, the amount of money you're paying, you know, it's got the fucking Gate Titan knockoff, which is very funny to me. Uh, it's got the Gate Titan knockoff inside it, which does seem to work quite well. Ooh, if they carry on like this, they're going to be a fucking force to reckon with. They really are. AGM. AGM, you know, they, they do loads of World War II stuff. They do loads of World War II stuff, and that's quite cool. You know, you've got MG, MG42 and things like that, MG34, whatever the fuck it is. I'm very tired now, hear my voice. AGM, they were right there at the start with Seamer and JG and Double, uh, Double Eagle and D-Boys. They were right there with these guys starting up the ACM craze and more power to them because again, their M14 is not as good as anybody else's M14, but it's still a good M14. And then you've got everything else they do as well. You know, the, the MP40, I've got a top MP40, the PGC gearbox in it. It's got like 10 mags with it. It's fucking immense. It's like 1500 quid. The AGM is better. And it's 120 quid. What do you want? AGM, all the normal stuff. Change the rubber if you can. Uh, change the barrel. Give it a reshim. Proper good guns. That's how I'm going to do this list. That's the entire thing for you. So that's that. That's the lot. This is a broad load of information. And I'm sure a few of you got a pretty fucking bored halfway through that. But this is because people are frequently asking me, hey, what should I buy? I want to buy a new AEG. What should I buy? And I figured from seeing everybody else's tier videos, do you know what? This is probably a good way of doing it. So hopefully this is actually fucking useful to you. Right then, ladies and jelly spoons. This one was dumb. This was right up there with the most difficult guns that I've ever, ever had to do. This was astoundingly, cunt-kickingly fuck. It was fucked awful okay so basically when king arms made this they've made such a beautiful gun now king arms kind of updated this they called it the hollow version and they still couldn't quite get it right and the issue i had is that the lower receiver will only accept the gearbox at a pissed angle and i was finding that no matter what i did I pulled a trigger on full auto, perfect. On semi, the trigger would lock back. And all I had to do was take the gearbox and just touch it delicately. And the trigger would ping forward. It wouldn't do it outside of the gearbox. It wouldn't do it outside of the body of the gun. Trying to keep the power up was very, very hard. The loading nozzle on this is a fucking long loading nozzle. And the gearbox casing will only take a uh, regular version 3 cylinder head. So you can't even have anything to stabilize it. That means if you have a really heavily loaded mag or a high cap you've really fucking wound, you might find that it's putting a lot of pressure on the nozzle and the power drops a little bit. Uh, this is common in a lot of guns with longer loading nozzles. The shorter the loading nozzle, realistically, the better. With that in mind, it's a regular old boring version 2 hop unit. You can't get a rotary in there because there's a clip that is attached to that. It's a spacer, that's all it does, it's a spacer, but it has to clip. So you can't use any of the kind of hop unit. 
It also, with this hop unit, doesn't like the Omega style nub. It likes a normal nub. But fortunately, the original barrel was fine and I was able to put a maple leaf rubber in it. This thing ate three different mid shaft motors. Now, what guns use fucking medium shaft motors anymore? You know, even in some of the newer six, they've just managed to get in there and change out the bracket a little bit into the bits and pieces of the pistol grip so you can use a short shaft motor. What, this, oh, it's so annoying. I don't know how or why. I thought, what are the chances that all three of these fucking motors that I've got are burnt out? In the end, I had to fucking take a long shaft motor and gut it and chop down the fucking shaft and oh, make just ghetto build a brand new high speed motor. All right, that was all I could do and it fried that as well. I don't know why, because the same motors were perfectly fine in other guns, but only when the medium shaft motors were in these guns did they start burning out, you know? It was something to do with the way the body is twisting the gearbox in the wrong direction. Now, I've managed to solve that, which is good just by, I've managed to, it's just, it's a case of having to assemble it in a funny way, uh, but a lot of the damage is done by then. Then it started blowing up MOSFETs. No reason blowing up MOSFETs. It blew up a little uh, tester MOSFET. It blew up uh, Perrin AB++, and that is two different brands of MOSFETs I tried. It blew it. In the end, I had to go, do you know what? I can't, I tell the customer, sorry, um, I'll take the hit, but this is never, ever gonna work. It's gonna go back to you in the same condition you received it, and that is just in bad condition. It was bought secondhand. Um, from a retailer and it was sold as a boneyard item you know it's, it was very obvious you know so yeah but I can't lose that much money I can't just throw away three days because three days three days on one gun is a fucking nightmare and anyone who's been in the tech business as long as me if you you know the same thing there's that gun that will not fucking go it just won't go and I said to the guy do you know what we can try a Titan, and if it burns out a Titan as well, which is less likely, but I don't know if you're gonna be able to program it, you know, uh, we'll try a Titan. So we used my last V3 Titan, and thank fuck it went in there. Now he sent me this adapter for his stock. He wanted to use the adapter so we could side fold it, and obviously it's meant for uh, a real AR, I guess, or gas blowback tube at least. But uh, now that we've front wired it because these guns do not come front wired they're meant to be back wired I've managed to retrofit it uh, into front wiring mode all you've got to do is pop out one screw pop out the pin pull the lower backwards and you can take the top off like you normally would with a generic SIG AEG I've taken out the gas tube and I've locked everything in place to make sure it's not going to move because the gas tube does help hold everything in place so now everything in there is lovely and solid that is going fucking nowhere so I'm really pleased with that because that was wobbling like a shit when I got it it will take any battery that goes in there but I advise them 7.4 you know a 30c 7.4 and whatever biggest fits in there go mad or a peck box on the side the options are there and it means they can fold it as well can't do it if there's wires running it will just tear it to fuck so yeah do you know what I'm proud of myself because I'd given up last night. Last night I'd given up and it was like, do you know what? I'm gonna have to send it back to him and go, do you know, I'm gonna cover your postage and that kind of shit. Uh, and walk away knowing that I'd lost quite a lot of money in time and in parts. But I'm glad I stuck with it because it fires like a fucking demon. It's so good, it's so good now. It's reignited me to wanting one of these again. And let's face it, as soon as they re-release this with the hollow version, this little short version, they fucking discontinued that pretty quick as well because these suck dicks. But with the Hadron Energy 7.4, it is absolutely beautiful. And with the right amount of pre-cocking on it, uh, just reduced down because I've done my short stroking shit, you can use 11.1 as well. Um, these batteries seem to be quite good. I'm, I've been testing them a little bit to see what I think of them because I want a LiPo that I can fucking rely on. And um, so far, I've not killed anybody with it and I'm a complete moron with LiPos. So the only thing I'm not too pleased about, I'm not happy about it, um, I had 
had to PTFE tape it. I had absolutely no choice. I'm not pleased with myself. I'm not impressed with myself, but it had to be done because a gas blowback tube is too fat to fit in it and an AEG tube is too thin to fit in it. So um, I had to use PTFE tape. It's what it's for. It goes on threads of pipes. It's a stock pipe tube. It's what it's for, all right? Fuck you. I'm a hypocrite. Fuck you. This one here, we are going to do whatever we can to make this a DMR that is using 0.32s and on a 0.2 gram BB it's not doing over 325. That's what we're going to be setting it for and we want to use as many of the original parts as possible, making it as quiet as possible and put in a parent. Now I'd like to keep the shimming exactly how it was so that I can clean this all out and then see what I think of, because none of the gears are moving up and down, but I do want to see, I'm going to be using these gears, I want to see exactly what the deal is and exactly how they decided to shim it. Still touching. Still touching. Oh, I don't know. Might get away with that, I think that's all right. I'm not always going to do videos like this where I do a big long video and then show you some shit in real time, because some people don't want to see that and honestly if I'm making a 15 minute video I might have to sift through three hours of footage so the minimum time I'm working on that video is three hours so just to give you a bit of an idea on how much it takes in and out ugh, horrible now I'm waiting for the comments that are going to be oh that sounds noisy the gears sound a bit noisy I wanted to concentrate on this gear here. Okay, I'm gonna get my finger in and I'm gonna spin it. I'm reasonably sure that is just the gear. As you can see, it rocks left and right. That's crazy. Okay, I cannot use these here. One of them is damaged and it will take me too long to figure out which one. So we're going to fuck them all off. This is with a G and G gear inside it. Much less pronounced. It's silent as well. Now, got a little bit of play. So there we are, much better with a G and G gear inside it. I'm hoping that I don't have to change out the bevel gear as well, but I don't think I will. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to creep the trigger so you can hear it. Ready? How's that? <laughs>